So this is the sketchiest tool I think I've ever seen. That's the table saw. And if you're not familiar, it's the Shopsmith Mark V, the five-in-one woodworking mega machine. This thing was the admiration of all woodworkers in 1946 when it was invented by German immigrant Hans Goldschmidt. <laughs> Point of this tool was to try and make woodworking more accessible in the home. You see, back in the day, woodworking tools were huge. They were hard to get your hands on. They were super expensive and it made woodworking really difficult to get into with power tools. The intention of this tool was to put one motor head and have all this stuff attached to it to give you the capabilities of a wood shop in a small footprint. And I love anything that makes woodworking more accessible, so that sounds awesome. But it got me thinking, why have I never seen anyone using this damn tool? Why the hell do I only find this when I'm on the internet looking for used tools on Facebook Marketplace? Seems to be just a spot in most people's basements or garages and sitting in a corner somewhere. So I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. I did a search on Facebook and there's like five of these within four miles of the shop. So I'm gonna grab the guys, we're gonna go and crawl into somebody's basement, I'm gonna unclutter one of these suckers, we're gonna drag it back here, and I'm gonna figure out if it's the greatest woodworking tool in the history of mankind, or if the rumors are true and it's just a death trap for all of your fingers. <laughs> Let's go. Alrighty! We are unloaded. We've got two boxes with some awesome attachments for this thing that have never been opened. I didn't want to dive too deeply into them in a stranger's basement. I don't know, you guys might be more comfortable with other things. She's looking purdy and purdy ridiculous if you ask me. Built this, all this says is it's a Mark V, the model, volts, 13 amps, 60 hertz. Warning, this shaft is for the jointer only. This is pretty hilarious, check this out. This is the warning label and it goes from general to table saw to drill press to disc sander to wood tape. <laughs> Pretty much just saying, this shit's dangerous, peoples. My, my favorite part is it says, read and understand the instruction manual. Just give me a month and I'll get through this sucker. <laughs> Cause this thing is enormous. Ooh, a little extra bonus in there. Looks like it's in good shape. Besides this blade here that's, I don't know if it's used to cut cardboard or what the hell that thing's for. Table goes up and down, which is comical. And then I think the most comical, the reason I'm mostly terrified of this table saw and why it'll be the last thing we test, whole table tilts, <laughs> which is absurd. And then you can also, come over here, adjust it is by moving the blade in and out. I don't know, for some reason my heart just tells me that's sketchy. Why don't we unbox a bunch of the crap that we have and fire this sucker up and see how she does. <laughs> we were surprised to see that the Power Tool Woodworking for Everyone book is intact and with it. This is supposedly the gospel of the Shopsmith. We, we love our unboxings around here if you didn't know. Sometimes you get treats that you just didn't know you needed. Like, whatever that is. There she is. That thing looks brand new. Like this is the part about this tool that baffles me. It's like, anytime you wanna use it, you gotta move this stuff <laughs> like this. But it comes Ray Rock with a tension blade on it. $381.95 for this sucker. Back in 94, it's older than Tyler. Look at that. I keep going back in my head, like referencing this, this, uh, <clears throat> this video we watched of this dude claiming that this is the most durable and strongest and best 12 inch bandsaw on the market. There's the strongest 11 inch bandsaw on the market today. I don't know how the hell that's possible, but it looks like we've got our posts here, like it's supposed to be there. Smooth, sounds real smooth. How do I release tension without cutting my finger off? I don't read the manual. But what if you... Steel toes. I think we just put the sucker in. Then we can stand her up on the actual machine. Put the plate on the base, I think. So this is on a weird arm. And then these have bolts on the inside, I think. So when you roll it, see how it has... Mm. Bang! It's a bandsaw. <laughs> that is amazing. It's more terrifying. It's amazing. It's getting pretty squirrely. Okay, so I just need another tool here, excuse me. This thing's getting better by the minute. This is the Shopsmith. Is this worth it so far? No. <laughs> All you're getting is the space saving part of it, but this is a pain in the butt. Seems like this puts the blade tension on. I'm curious how we get it to actually work 
No, I, I think we need to have a competition in which the punishment is the loser can only build with this. One tool challenge? Yeah, my one tool challenge. I come out with this sucker. What is that? No, yeah, you're kidding. It says headstock and accessory. Slide is this, the motor over to it. Is this the shaft? How the hell did we get this to turn on now? Our optional attachments fit right on the end of the machine here and power off the main unit. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. There's no way they made this and this is just plastic on plastic. Oh my goodness. Spinning it, how many RPMs? Right, just a piece of plastic? I, there's gotta be. Plastic with some grooves cutting it. I feel bamboozled. For an hour in, can't even turn it on. You pissing me off. Does that happen to line up with all the grooves on that piece of the little plastic? Seems like this lines up like that. Oh my goodness. This is one of the places that requires two people, which like, <laughs> supposed to be super easy for one guy, but this, this somehow goes on to the machine here, and then with this side over here aligns with it, so we need to pick this up so they're in alignment. This only fits on one side of this thingy because it only has four parts. This side has five. That fits when you have five, but this doesn't fit on here. So we can't even turn this sucker on right now. Maybe that part will come up somewhere in like another box, but. Ho, ho, ho! Oh, on the floor, baby! We're back in business. Oh my goodness. Now we get our plastic shaft. This thing is the shaft of all shafts. How the f is this safe? Like, why of guy. everything on this is this piece plastic? Hey! hey. All right. Well, that's not easy at all. How do we get this one off? This stupid shit. I need to sit down, maybe take a nap. Like, I think putting our CNC together from scratch was easier than this. <laughs> you do not have to get your hand around the blade this much on a even a job site saw. Okay, I don't know what anything's doing, but there ain't nothing to it but to do it. Let's fire this bit up. Watch your eyeballs. I'm gonna watch mine with these awesome pair of glasses that we're working on bringing to market for you guys. Woo! -hoo. Ready? Ah! <laughs> Let, let's read the instructions. <laughs> Matt shouldn't have done that. Maybe it has to be a loose blade. <laughs> Put my butt this pucker there. Yeah, that's all that happened. Too much, too much tension. Okay, so you're supposed to be able to adjust the wheels. You know, sometimes, sometimes when you're making videos for the people, you just gotta buck up and take one for the team. Fortunately, no one got hurt round one. It's just so not smooth. Round two, hold your loins, cross your groins. Here we go. So I'm supposed to change jigsaw router. I don't know what RPM. It, look at the wobble. I don't have not want to be, and that's on an uphill angle. Should we bring this down a little bit? Probably should be level. Let's fix that. Let's see what speed, because now the next thing we do is like, while it's running, you want to change the speed. So that's the drum sander. We got the disc sand. The jigsaw, like is this considered a jigsaw? How the hell you would use a jigsaw on this? I don't know. We need to be down here. That sounds much better. The sure jigsaw. does. Yeah. We think that's a little sticker. Should we cut something? Yeah. I do not like that the power's over there. Don't like that the power's over there at all. I don't like that shaft. But like, in reality, it, it works. I definitely wouldn't, I wonder what it costs now, put it on the screen somewhere for what that bandsaw accessory costs. I'd probably go with a four model plug-in though. So, all right, next accessory. The next thing that people actually really like about this machine is the drill press, which gets pretty insane. So we're gonna give it a shot. No big deal. Let me just carry my bandsaw somewhere and store it now. A lot of the adaptability of this tool comes from this being the motor head and this whole thing, like being able to move. And so this whole side pivots 
and I think this is how we turn into a drill press, if I can recall. I think that's part one of drill press mode. Part two is this. Kind of looks like a drill press. We've got the God key and this chuck. I don't know what I'm doing. I think of everything going on, this might be the most brilliant part. So to get the table to go up and down, I'm pretty sure I just have to man bear, like that's how you do it, is to this here, which is incredibly inconvenient. There's our drill press throw. I think this is a depth stop here. She needs some lube. Get in there. This is gonna have to do. Like there's our max throw. This is kind of clever. Like here we're at two, mm -hmm. right? It's, it stops right there. I guess let's plug it in, cut a hole. <laughs> but look how big this drill press is. This is a John for reference, so we're at least six foot tall on this way, which is fine. But supposedly this is everyone's favorite tool from this thing. It's like rigid, it's good, it's 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 not very complicated because of the motor head and what, the way it spins. The speed adjustment, I guess, is the same dial. Shall we? Hit it. Or do you want to go fast? I want to go fast. All right, let's cut some holes. I hate that it's left-handed. I'm right-handed. It works. I mean, I guess if you had no other option, it'd be a solid option. I'm impressed. As a drill press, it's 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 not bad, right? Yep. Ah. I'm getting more and more absurd. That is insane, the amount of play in this thing. So would you mind like telling me how you're supposed to stay on? So that's a stop for if you wanna use, like you find 90 and you wanna put that on there. Cause I mean, that's perfectly at zero. It doesn't stay square this way then. We're on the same, that's the question I'm also asking. This won't stay on. All right, so you pull it out to lock it this way. Push it in to lock it this way. Ding, ding, baby. This thing is, don't make me poop myself. I don't like anything about this. So first and foremost, a joiner is pretty dangerous tool. I mean, you've got open blade. You just want to be very careful as you use something like this. It's not a tool you want to fuss around with. Lots of guys out there have lost fingers because of these cutter heads here. I'm trying to keep that open <laughs> so I can kind of clean those off. We're missing a bunch of crap for it. This shaft is the scariest thing ever. I never trust a piece of plastic like this turning at as high speed as this thing goes. Isn't this generally why most tools have uh, covers all over all spinning parts? Yeah, I mean, in woodworking, like the rule of thumb is, you know, you don't wear gloves, you don't want loose things. Like, literally, you don't want these. And it's because of stuff like this. There's a large part of me that really doesn't want to turn this on. The shaft's not straight. What the F? I'm starting to get pissed off now. <laughs> this is supposed to be for like a one man wrecking crew who's on a mission from Elon Musk's planet to do awesome stuff. And like, it's just genuinely, I don't know how you could possibly do that. <sighs> Let me risk life and limb to make a cut on this thing for the sake of video. <laughs> High speed moving parts and blades and stuff. I would never, and I mean, never be comfortable taking something off the floor, putting it on this and then having everything be like, the exact same as it was before. Every single time you'd be going through this BS to try and get everything aligned, make sure it's safe and perfect and all that. So like, that's something that scares the crap out of me. All for this little stupid four inch joiner. I got a piece of wood. I'm just scared. I, at least I know that like not much can go wrong here. Worst case is it's dull. All the safety precautions have been taken. Ready? Yeah. Not too bad. Now I will say for like the sake of what the hell it is, being a like very tiny joiner, that was pretty smooth. Very, very shallow cut. Fence is definitely out of square again. <laughs> Even though I think you guys have watched me adjust it to square like five times. Okay, let's try this again. Let's give her another shot. scary as hell. I mean, you got a nice square cut there, but I really don't like how, once you come through the material, if you wanna keep pressure, you lose the fence over here. 
right? You just literally start walking. I just walked it off the fence. I'm not a huge fan of this, and I think you can get a six inch bench top for pretty affordable. Tyler, let's see what this sucker goes for. $627 for that. Brand new from Shopsmith. No wonder this company went bankrupt. That is an absolute atrocity. You get a six inch bench top for 323 from Grizzly, which is a decently well known. I think the Jet one is 750 bucks. You can get super solid tools at a way better price. 100% not worth it at all. We don't have the accessories we need for the lathe. We don't have the accessories we need for the disc sander, which are two adamant features a lot of people like about this. Hey, look what I just found. I guess our uh, Lord and Savior, Ron Swanson, must have uh, been shining down on us because we just found a bunch more crap for it. We've got <clears throat> multiple saw blades, which by the way, look like you need to lock them on the arbor. I think I mentioned that earlier, but look, that's for the lathe, which is good because we can at least try it. And now we've got the backing plate for the sander, which I literally just said we didn't have. We're gonna use these bunk ass tools. And here we got the lathe plate. So this is pretty common, common bowl chuck. I'm thinking that this might be the best option if you're like looking to get into a cheap lathe and you can find one of these, maybe get some versatility out of it. We still have hope for the table saw. And by we, I mean Tyler. And by Tyler, I mean nobody. But that being said, you know, the lathe part should should work in theory. Let me let me move this off of the damn death jointer and plastic dildo thing over there. I don't like talking smack on tools because I do realize how expensive they are, but man, is this just, I can't get my head around telling someone to buy this. Let me get a piece of wood. I got this like bowl blank that I just kind of whipped together here so we can give this a shot. As you can see, we're not gonna have any support on this side, which means I'm probably not even gonna be able to make a bowl or anything for that matter. But I should be able to give it a decent shot at like trying out like moving parts and stuff. Uh, so pretty, this is kind of, I guess a cool feature. I get to move this thing around. So instead of like this on, the, on a regular lathe, thumbs up and down, like in the hole and then you tighten the hole. We're just gonna kind of do it like this. I don't love it, a little bit sketch. Tighten it there, we kind of in the, the rule of thumbs just be slightly above center. I don't like that that doesn't lock. I guess to lock it, I have to bust out this thing. I just hate that it takes a second tool. Okay, there we go. It's, uh, so lathe, you, like when you're roughing on a lathe, that's pretty much a lot of feel. I'm not, a, I'm not a very good turner, so we're gonna slow this thing down. So that's like as slow as it'll go. Rattling and stuff, but I'm not sure where it's coming from. This is probably a terrible choice, but this dude gave us some turning tools that come with some, the Shopsmith makes. Here we go. Very dull. One sec. I've got a few turning tools. I don't really know how to use these, but we're gonna try. We got a burr on this, so let's see if this works. I, it's it's awkward, dude. I mean, it does not sound good. Hey, that's how turning sounds. I mean, turning's just freaking scary. You don't know what you're doing. I, it's just like I don't know. We're roughing too. You could definitely tell like it doesn't have any balls though. Like it's just an underpowered motor. That's a decent round. And if you're a beginner like me, like, th like this is a solid setup for this. I'm, I'm gonna say I'm not necessarily like, oh, this is, this is the worst. I'm gonna give this a thumbs up in regards to like, if you're looking for a lathe and you find one used, uh, definitely a decent option. Just as long as it's got everything for lathe, it's gonna have a good footprint for like a normal lathe and all that fun stuff. So. Uh, let's clean this up, Tyler, and let's test what everyone came to see, the table saw. So first and foremost, this is how these blades mount. You literally have to put them on its own arbor, and each blade comes on and off with this. But it comes on, the whole thing is predicated on this set, set screw. So if your set screw comes loose, the blade's coming off absolutely terrifies me. 
I was like, that's the table saw. I think you forgot a piece. No. Horrifying. I don't know. Doesn't, doesn't make me feel any better. So put that on. In order to do that, I gotta do this. Then do this. I don't like having to handle the blade like this. Eh. Okay, there we go. So those are both on. That goes up, this goes up and down. A little bit of lubrication there. Oh, I'm a butthole is a puckered. Somebody's been watching too much uh, mm -hmm. Josh Wiseman. I, I actually don't I think there's such a thing as watching too much Josh Wiseman. But his, most of the time what Josh does is it doesn't, you know, in, inherently put the fear of losing limbs in his, he's just making delicious shit. It's insane how much you need this tool. Like what if you lose one of these little screws here? She's a bit of a pain in the arse. All right, that plate. I guess I gotta bring the table saw up above it and then, then down on top of it. Boy, that's, there's just, it's simple, it's okay, and it's horrifying. <laughs> so I didn't cheap out here on the, just so you guys know too. I spent $1,200 on this to make this video for you guys. So, if you could please support the channel, we've got some brand new merch, which I will be modeling here. And I'm not even gonna try to sell this again on the internet because I don't think this belongs in anyone's house, shop, garage. Unless you're looking for like a shelf, I'm gonna keep it in my dumpster. Sorry, Joe, not your fault. So supposedly, this is kind of a cool thing here. Now, they made these adjustable knobs. If you look at these, they allow you to slide this plate here, it gives you more in-feed and out-feed, supposedly. Then you can also take these telescoping legs here, use them for support to give you a little bit more out-feed table. And once I know where I'm going, you can do the same thing on both ends. But like, oh, oh, I don't like it at all, Tyler. I don't like it. I don't like this, Christy, wake up! I'm scared. I do think that, the, I do think this is brilliant. Don't get me wrong. The concept of this, quite brilliant. I could just totally see how it's just really not good for a lot of people. So that's like the table saw setup. More or less, it's just like a really wide job site saw at this point. And now, I guess, this is the moment of truth. Let's cut something. I think the, uh, remember when I was talking about the set screw? Remember when I was talking about the set screw? That's exactly what that is, guaranteed. That arbor was just spinning on the frickin' whatever the hell that called. And, and that set screw came loose. <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> I guarantee you that's what it was though, Tyler. Right? That's like, right. come on. Nothing about it is smooth. Nothing about it is easy. I gotta do all this just to check the frickin' arbor. I don't wanna hear it from any of you in the comments that like find this tool to be good for the beginner or if you've used one and you're good at it, like this is not a tool I would recommend to anybody. If they aren't familiar with how tools work, if they aren't familiar with using tools, I would never, I would n I'm adamantly going to give this no. There's too many variables. Most beginners are gonna do what I just did, turn that sucker on, they're not gonna know that that arbor's loose and they're gonna go and try and cut something and um, they're just gonna think that the blade's coming down to a stop and they're gonna hurt themselves. And we do not want that. I do not want people hurting themselves. So like, this is what I don't like. Like, there's one screw. All I can do is tighten it. I've got no other option, guys. Should not be this hard. Let's see if that set screw problem stops. You hear all that vibration? I don't like that vibration. The vibe's off, man. But the saw blade came down and stopped. So it was definitely spinning around the arbor still. Terrifying. All right, one cut, everyone knows the rules. Super cute, it worked fine. I don't like it. Some of the other features I'm not gonna risk my finger showing you guys is that they, this tool prides itself on um, having versatility in regards to this table here. And so 
you can adjust the angle of the saw and then because the saw blades able to move you can literally do some crazy shit like this and bring it out here so it's centered lock it in and then what these lunatics do on the video is they take this which is like you have to have this in order to use this tool bring this in here hold it like this and then run it across the blade i don't know tyler you feeling ballsy awesome compound miters on here i'm like they make a freaking compound miter saw there's so much easier this, whatever this is one of the most dangerous cuts i've literally ever done turn the saw on Hard to tell, but that is a compound miter cut on a table saw, which you usually can't do. I don't even want to do that though. Like, screw that. If you lose this thing, you're screwed. Um, don't buy this tool. If you want it for a lathe, cool. Maybe a backup drill press, cool. Everything else, don't suggest. Don't waste your money. You're better off buying used stuff on Facebook Marketplace. If you got another crazy tool that's like this, link one down below. Maybe I'll find one, maybe I'll buy one, maybe I'll try one. And let me know, what are we gonna build next?